All right, here's a bit of an update. Um, I do want to get rid of this temporary rubber hose I put on there. And uh, I did learn that the efficiency of this pump is significantly decreased by having a smaller than one inch ID suction line. And this is a three quarter inch because it was the biggest hose I could find when I first set this up. So, I've obtained a length of one inch ID vinyl tubing and also for places where I need to get into smaller openings some three quarter inch ID vinyl tubing and uh, the necessary fittings for the three quarter inch with a three quarter to one inch NPT adapter and then just a one inch to one inch so each hose can have their own fittings attached to them and uh, since I want to be able to exchange these pretty easily depending on which tank I'm pumping from I don't want to have to be reaching up into there or unmounting the pump to do it so I have a length of one inch uh, NPT pipe nipple that should be about the right length to get down below the mounting bracket and then a couple one inch unions the idea being that I'll bring this pipe down and then put a union on it and the top half of the union will stay on the pipe and this will be permanently attached to the pump and then I'll have both of these fittings one in the bottom half of that union and the other one in the bottom half of this union I won't use the top half so it'll be pretty easy to just reach down here and attach and detach whichever hose I want to use okay there's just a test fit to make sure that this uh, is going to come down long enough for me to have this part of the union on the bottom that it would be easily accessible All right, there are the two half union and hose barb assemblies, one inch and three quarter inch. Okay, the uh, three quarter inch hose assembly is complete, and the one inch assembly. All right, there's the new one inch suction hose connected with its union to the bottom of the pump. I've cut it to length allowing for the extra length of this nipple in the union so it doesn't exceed three feet which is the recommended suction height if I ever want to put on a longer hose it'll be easy enough to do so assuming it'll work now the nice thing about this is with the union these hoses always want to have somewhat of a curve to them and depending where I'm pumping from I can just loosen the union swing it around and then tighten it up again And uh, there should be a good enough seal in that union, just finger tight, to uh, do most of the pumping I need. I don't think it'll leak that much. It's got it's got this type of fitting on it with the uh, hone brass seal there, so it should make a pretty good. Uh, seal even without it being really wrenched down super tight but if I have to put a wrench on it and snug it up just a little bit I can and there's the three quarter inch one now I haven't heat treated this yet I did heat treat the one inch one a little bit to make it a little less curvy these always want to come that way but I put a heat gun on them and pull them a little straighter and it takes some of that springiness out of them so I still have to do that with this three-quarter inch one. So I've uh, made up a couple of pipe caps 
for the three quarter inch and one inch ID tubes. I rigged up this quick and dirty bracket to go in my vise. So I can hang the uh, one inch through here. and the three-quarter through there and I've got my hot water pot going there I'm hoping to pour some hot water into these hoses I've got my uh, caps down here which also weigh quite a bit so they'll help pull it down a little bit alright I've got them filled up with the hot water I'm going to let them sit a little bit for the heat to permeate the plastic. Yeah, they're already nice and warm. Give them just a little more time. And then I'm going to start uh, trying to, especially this one, which is a little bit oval, try to squeeze it more the other way to try to get it to uh, assume a rounder shape. The three-quarter inch one's already round, I just need it to straighten out a little bit, so I'm going to actually try reverse bending it a little bit to try to stretch it more in that direction. Well, uh, I drained the water out and put some fresh hot water in there, and now I've got them kind of splinted to some dowel and some scrap plywood. And I'm just going to let it cool off with them hanging there for a few hours. And then I don't know that I can do much more than that. They're much more evenly and thoroughly heated than I could get with my uh, hot air gun, which is what I was trying previously. So I guess these are going to be about as straight as I can get them. Alright, so after everything cooled off and I removed the splints, most of the curl has come out of these tubes and uh, the one inch one is still somewhat ovaloid but it's definitely rounder in cross section than it was originally and you may remember this one was curled almost like a J and it's now hanging pretty much close to straight which is a big improvement so not perfect but definitely worthwhile doing I think I'm expecting to keep these plugs on the bottom just like that and uh, I'm thinking I may keep one of these on the pump and the other one I'll put the other half of the union on there and cap it off with something and probably modify this carrier to just keep it in the garage so that the unused one is hanging straight all the time with its weight on the bottom and no bugs or dirt are going to go into it as long as it's closed off so I think that's probably a pretty good way of doing this alright so I've got a roller type uh, clamp for things like uh, broom handles and so on it's about the right size to go around this part of the unused or spare hose I've put the top half of a union on the three-quarter inch hose and then just a PVC hole plug just to keep the critters out and dust so any fuel that gets pulled up through here should be pretty clean. Um, because of the larger diameter up here I need to offset this from the wall so I've got a piece of half inch plywood. Two holes are, well they're all clearance holes, two of them will go right through the sheet metal with drywall screws and the third one will go underneath and get a little bit more purchase these are a little bit short so this one will go through and go uh, an extra I don't know three sixteenths of an inch at least into the the uh, backing wood so it'll be a little stronger so that's the first thing I'm going to put up alright so there's that and this will just 
clip in like that, thereby holding the hose in a vertical position where if anything it'll straighten out even more. And uh, I've got some limited space here but it's going to go Got my string trimmer up there and the hose kind of hangs out behind it. Use of space, says I. Okay, I've got a couple of, I don't know what they are, inch and a half or something, conduit uh, wall clamps, which I've screwed to the 2x4. And then I put the bolts back in and adjusted them to the proper diameter and now I can take this telescoping suction pipe just like that and it's still below the lowest setting that the uh, pump can go to I think I'm going to lay my hands on a 1 inch NPT PVC cap to go over the top of this again just to keep bugs and so on out of it. And uh, if I have the right size, I might even put a piece of PVC on the bottom to kind of surround these slots here. So, again, I'm mostly concerned with vermin going in there and making nests when it's not in use. Okay, I have here a piece about one and a quarter inches of one and a half inch PVC pipe, which I've cut on the bandsaw and kind of squared up. Yeah, it should fit the bottom just about perfectly. Fits right in there, but there's hardly any spare space, so I think that would do the trick. Well, my scrap supplies are limited, but I do have a piece of uh, whatever it is here, one and a quarter inch PVC cap, which can sit on there and that'll do the trick for the bugs. I might eventually pick up a, uh, a uh, cap for this as well. But right now I'm going to use that. I just have to figure out how best to secure this to the base of the pump stand. I'm trying to decide if just plain old glue will do the trick or if I need to do something more elaborate. Okay, meanwhile, I've decided to just epoxy this uh, PVC ring down there to the, the base of the stand. Okay, there we go. And I'm just going to drop that on there until I get a proper cap for it or decide to leave it like it is. Either way, it, there won't be any bugs getting in there or dust or dirt. Now, I'd mentioned before that the way this pump came, it just has this 5 16 18 bolt that goes through the wooden handle and it screws into the threaded hole in the crank arm, which means if you tighten it down enough that it doesn't wobble, it locks the crank arm in, or it locks, locks the crank in place. And uh, Phil Wright advised me that there should be a 5 16 18 locking nut back here, but it wasn't included with the kit. They were going to send me one. I haven't received it yet. So I just bought my own. I'm going to stick that on there. So the uh, nut goes on like that, then I have to hold the bolt with the screwdriver in the right position to have just a little looseness here while I tighten this side up with the wrench. Okay, so that's locked on there now. And I just have a slight amount of play, but now the handle spins like it should. That'll make it a lot nicer for cranking. I should reiterate that the instructions don't say anything about assembling this or what parts there are, although the lock nut is shown on the 
exploded parts diagram in the manual. And I've got the uh, one inch PVC or vinyl at least suction hose hanging there with its temporary weight and plug on the bottom. So I think this is complete now.